On March 3, 1980, the first nuclear submarine and the first vessel to go to the North Pole, the USS Nautilus, was decommissioned. June 1952, President Harry Truman officiated at Nautilus Key Lane. January 1954, Mrs. Dwight D. Eisenhower, wife of the president, launched Nautilus. In September 1954, Nautilus was commissioned. The submarine was the sixth vessel of the U.S. Navy to bear the name. It's commonly thought that the name is derived from the fictional submarine in the novel by Jules Verne, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This, at least, cannot be said for the first two surface ships to bear the name, as they both preceded the novel's publication in 1870. The Nautilus was much larger than any of its diesel predecessors. At 319 feet long, the submarine was home to 11 officers and 105 enlisted men. The newly developed submarine Model 2 Westinghouse Pressurized Water Nuclear Reactor otherwise known by the acronym SW2, was that heartbeat of the entire vessel, the engine. It allowed the vessel to drive really, really quick, dive really, really hard. It could dive to a depth of 700 feet, travel at over 22 knots on the surface and 23 knots underwater. That's about 26 miles an hour, 42 kilometers per hour, respectfully. This was faster than any previous submarine in history. The S2W engine was a pressurized water reactor, PWR, which used uranium U-235 as its fuel. The enriched uranium inserted as pellets into rods and bundled together were used to build the core of the reactor. The fission of this material produced heat within the core. The heat generated by the core was removed by thermal conduction to water circulating around it under high pressure. This pressure enabled the water to absorb a greater amount of heat without boiling and was pumped at temperatures of around 300 degrees Celsius in a continuous loop from the core to a heat exchanger. The heat was transferred to water in a secondary loop, boiled, creating steam, which was used to drive a steam turbine. The water in the primary loop then returned to the core to repeat the cycle. The secondary loop steam passed through a condenser to return it to liquid form, and it was pumped back to the heat exchanger to repeat its own cycle once again. The steam turbine provided propulsion for the ship through two drive shafts to propellers at the rear of the ship, and drove generators which produced electricity to power the auxiliary systems of the ship. These included lighting, heating, air purification, oxygen, and water generation. This 3,400-pound submarine, about the length of a football field, was the first true submarine. It could stay underwater for very long periods of time. World War II submarines would remain submerged for only about 12 to 48 hours, where the USS Nautilus could remain underwater for two weeks or more at a time. For the first two years, Nautilus conducted various experiments involving submerged speeds and endurance. This helped the U.S. Navy enhance their anti-submarine equipment as they quickly discovered existing weapons to be obsolete and not capable of combating a submarine capable of rapid speeds and depth changes. The fact that the vessel could stay underwater for two weeks at a time revealed brand new challenges for the U.S. Navy to consider. In 1958, the submarine sailed from Alaska under the polar ice cap passing under the North Pole. It surfaced again near Greenland. It was led by Commander William R. Anderson. The submarine's mission was sanctioned by President Dwight D. Eisenhower. The president wanted to build credibility for the submarine launch ballistic missile system that was currently under development at the time. The USS Nautilus left Seattle on June 9th that year and was forced to abort the trip 10 days later when deep draft ice was found in the shallow waters of the Bering Strait. They circled back to Pearl Harbor. They waited for conditions to change. And then on August 1st, 1958, they left port and set sail for the Bering Strait yet again, with the depth of the sea ice now reduced. They were able to dive, avoid obstacles, 
and the Nautilus became the first vessel to reach the North Pole two days later. Continuing on, Nautilus completed its transit of the Arctic by surfacing in the Atlantic northeast of Greenland, 96 hours later. Sailing to Portland, England, Nautilus was awarded the Presidential Unit Citation, becoming the first ship to receive the award in peacetime. The Nautilus was in active naval service from 1954 to 1980. It was the 571st submarine in the U.S. Navy fleet. In 1976, the Nautilus was awarded the White A for anti-submarine warfare, weapons, and operations excellence. In 1979, Nautilus completed her last voyage under her own power. From Groton, Connecticut to Mar Island Naval Shipyard, Vallejo, California, arriving on 26 May 1979. In her 25 years of service, she had completed a total of over 2,500 dives, traveled over half a million nautical miles. She was decommissioned, stripped of the nuclear reactor, and was prepared for her new role as an exhibition historic ship. And on May 20th, 1982, she was designated a National Historic Landmark. Nautilus was towed back to her birthplace at Groton, Connecticut, and arrived July 6th, 1985. She was opened to the public as the prime exhibit at the New Submarine Force Museum in 1986. These are Interesting Things with J.C.